In the meantime, started launching some rockets. The plan is to set up a basic communications network around the moon. Did it uh, in three separate launches so far using my littlest rocket. That's the Woomera 1, the, capable of taking 1.5 tons up to a low carbon orbit. Uh, my VAB-1 uh, is capable of cranking out a new Woomera-1 in just uh, like about two and a half days. Yeah, it's right, right about 60 hours. Uh, so that, that, is, that is the fastest rate of launch that I can do currently. Yep, there it is. It's kind of a cute little rocket. It's the, the difference between an Atlatl and a Woomera. Uh, I use an Atlatl dart if I want the upper stage to have be this multi-function thing that has the dock, docking ports and RCS, you know, really, if if I want the to to use the upper stage to dock with something else, uh, and possibly use the upper stage later for, for some other project, then I'll use an atlatl dart. If it's it's going to be just a single use and disposable upper stage, then I use a Woomera. So here's my commsat. Um, I, I built my commsats. Each one of them has about 3,500 meters per second of delta V, so they're perfectly capable, each one of them uh, taking themselves into orbit around the moon. Uh, maybe I should have done some calculation. I should have figured out what altitude I wanted these things to be at, but I played around with it and eventually figured out. And after I got that first one, we did two more, just exactly like it. And I spent some time hurting my brain trying to figure out how to get all the orbits to sync up so that they will all work happily together. So that was then, and now we're recording live, and here's the project for today. So here we are at year 60, day 16. Take a look at things that we have coming up. VAB-1 has our fourth moon communication satellite. This one's de uh, destined for a high Molnia orbit. It's supposed to launch in 16 hours. VAB-2 has station module 1. is supposed to launch in 18 hours. Now, I'm working with a single launch facility, a single pad here, so um, I'm giving myself a rule that we can only do one launch per day, one launch per 24 hours. It, take, it takes some time to, to read reset everything, reset all the infrastructure. I mean, these uh, more maneuver nodes for the to, uh, my Mooncom satellites in order to get them spaced out into the orbit appropriately, but that's not for a few days yet. So at the moment, I, I feel that Station Module 1 is a higher priority than Mooncom 4, so Mooncom 4 is going to wait a little while. Here we go. Add that alarm and delete this one. Okay, cool. I just looked it up and guess what? It actually came back and says no launch delay. This one is going to launch on time, if you can believe that. So, uh, I mean, after the, the previous episodes, a whole lot uh, of the dialogue and drama scenes, a whole lot of exposition, explaining new story elements, as well as a lot of fairly weighty description of uh, all, all the crazy things that I'm doing with the, the house rules in, in this save file, uh, Today's episode is should be fairly straightforward. I'm, I want to launch a new state space station core for the, the station Adventure Reborn, and I want to take the existing components and I want to dock them to it. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, a fairly fairly straightforward rendezvous and docking, and then we'll have a space station working again. Let's be certain that I saved the correct one. Why don't we? Oh, it's a good thing I looked at this and there's no payload fairings on there. So it has a probe core. Yes, it does. Probe core, batteries, RCS in there, RCS ports, docking port there, docking ports there. Good. And our new Atlatl 10. Yeah, that, our, our Dart 10. Anyways, yeah, that first Dart 10 that I did so long ago that ended up being a bad idea. It was ugly and not and just not very well made. Here, okay, we'll get ourselves a couple of these. Payload fairings. Uh, we've got reasonable delta V numbers and thrust to weight numbers. Uh, this is wrong. What is going on? Why is this changed? Oh, okay, those are the payload fairings we just put on there. Man, that was a dumb mistake. But we caught it. All right, save that. And let's launch. At Latl 10, the, the first version of this rocket I made, I put those big airplane-style wings on them. I, I don't know. I thought, at the time, I thought it looked really cool, but it turned out that that was really kind of a bad idea. What is this doing that for? Stop doing that. So, yeah, this this is, it's pretty much the same configuration as all my other Atlatls. 
Okay, where's our station it is? Right up there, almost exactly in the opposite side of the planet. So we're going to go into a lower orbit in order to catch up to it. Here we go. Yeah, and at level 10, it currently is is my, my heaviest rocket, except for something that I did develop behind the scenes. I developed a Marathon 15. So I'm looking forward to displaying that one. That's later. Let's go now. And we are off. 1.3 thrust to weight ratio at launch. I've just figured, just experimentation. I've, I've uh, in trying all these different designs, I, I find that that 1.3 it just seems like a good, um, like a good average middle of the road thrust to weight that has predictable behavior, and I, I know how the rocket is going to fly. You understand? Supersonic. Uh, equivalent airspeed is approaching its maximum, which is that uh, probably I understand that's the same thing as max Q. But it doesn't it shouldn't ever get above, say, 250. Yeah, I think it's, it's gonna peak around 235 ish. Let's go gradually pitching back some more. Well, equivalent airspeed drops down, and it's just as those solids are just about done. So we're just pulling just over two Gs. I'm glad that that bug that, that was making radial boosters crash into the sides of our rockets, I'm glad that got fixed. I don't have to worry about that anymore. Yeah, no surprises. In the business of launching rockets, no surprises is good because I don't, I don't recall ever having been, been pleasantly surprised by, by something unexpected happening in launching a rocket. Okay, and so the station is at 200 kilometers, so I'm going to aim for a 150 kilometer orbit. I, I don't know, how many times did I make the comment that, yeah, it's the, the, the what altitude, what your orbital, orbital altitude, that's kind of stuff you should decide before you launch, but I just never seem able to work that way. But then I was looking, I was, lot, I was watching uh, some of these this, this guys, uh, he's doing tutorial videos for, for Orbiter, you know, the, the, the first spa spaceship game that came before Kerbal Space Program. Oh, excuse me, simulator, not a game. <laughs> anyway, uh, so a guy was doing a, 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 a newbie's introductory tutorials for Orbiter, and he did, he did the same thing. Launch first, you know, sit and then see well, okay, where where's the where's the ISS and change changes orbit altitude then side on his orbit altitude then let's throttle down let's keep it under those three G's. So, you know, for, if a pro at that not a game simulator orbiter I mean, he does it. I suppose there's no shame in doing the same thing in KSP, right? <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever get around to doing any orbiter videos. It's something to think about. I mean, so so far, I looked at it once a few months ago, and I put it down. I picked it back up and looked at it some more. Um, I really like the the whole XR series of space planes. Those are fun. Last night, for the first time, I managed to to work work all the the all the the software, the MFDs. Yeah, let's ditch those. Yeah, in in order to work those well enough to in order to dock in XR2 to the ISS. So. That was fun. Three Gs again. Throttle down a bit more. All right. Throttle to zero. Stage and I just I just like watching these these stages do that big swerve maneuver like that. Pull them back out of the way so that whenever our exhaust hits it, nothing will explode and no debris will come hit this stage. All right. Cool. Throttle up. Apsis, one minute eight. Okay, so we'll just try and maintain this same altitude for a while. Let's go ahead and pull these solar panels out. Yeah, I think this version of Dart 10 it looks be better than that that big uh, the big shapeless you know just soda can looking thing that I that I came up with first time. This is a better version. That and the fuel it'll last in orbit so 
And we'll probably take... Another thing that I want to take a look at doing very soon is... Okay, uh, project number one right now is to get this, this space station put together. I'm also working on the, the communication network over the moon. After that, I'm going to send a scan sat to the moon and then do, do communication satellites over Minmus, followed by a scan sat for Minmus. But I also want to take a look at, at starting to... I want to plan for sending some uh, scan sats to uh, other planets. So this is the beginning. We will have this Dart 10 will be up in orbit, ready to serve as uh, you know an interplanetary uh, uh, transit transit stage for some kind of instrument package. It's probably very likely. Yeah, this this Dart is is destined. Let me see. I was looking for probably not Moho, but maybe Drez. Maybe yeah. This stage may end up going to Drez. We'll find out. Unless I'm, I end up sending something, some package to the moon with it first. 149. All right, 150. So, yeah, six and a half minutes will be up there. And continue this burn. Yeah, okay, I'll come back when we're about set to do some docking. And then we'll do some reassembling. We'll put our, put our station together. So, funny story. Uh, just went and I did the the math. Not math. I'm not gonna pretend it's math. I did the maneuver nodes and figured out here where I am gonna to set this up. You got a good set, uh, intercept for you know take us within yeah, just like uh, you know, a couple hundred meters. Um, but it turns out that that because we launched when the, the our station components are in almost on exactly the opposite side of the planet, that our rendezvous burn is actually going to happen after the next launch. I mean, unless this one gets delayed significantly. Uh, so, we are probably, we're going to go... Probably, we're, uh, we're going to launch that moon communication satellites first, and then we're going to do the space station stuff. And... Alarm. Close that one. Okay, good. Well, let's launch another moon con, except this one's going into the that high polar orbit, that Molnia orbit. My plan is I'm just I'm going to continue to record every launch, yeah, every launch in this save file, uh, just in case something bad happens. So it will be recorded if we actually do lose one, as I have been known to do in the past. But uh, I think a, bu a bunch of these will, you know, like the last couple of Mooncom launches, I showed just a couple of seconds of them, <laughs> if that. It's a good thing I like launching because this plan, this this plan that I've put together of how this series is going to run, I end up launching things a lot. Um, hello. Uh, that was unusual. Look at this kerosene. What happened here? Ooh, that was unusual. I just lost a whole bunch of delta v. Um, oh, we're starting to lose this rocket too. I wonder what happened. Okay, well, this is the reason why I decided I was going to continue recording every launch just in case something anomalous happens. So, we'll see. We just lost a... I'm not... I mean, I don't know how much total Delta V we lost in whatever the... a refueling... a fueling error in that rocket. It did not have the specified amount of fuel that it needs, but there's a significant amount of Delta V reserve actually in the the payload itself, in this commsat. Don't descend, come on. Jump more. Okay, a vertical speed coming back up. And again, we are descending. All right, point up some more. So we're losing lots of stuff, lots of delta v to have an angle like this. The first stage had problems, and so the second and third stage inherited problems from it. Okay, 45, 15. Yeah, okay. It looks like this stage should still be able to get it in orbit. We're recalling that. Because our CompSat it weighs about one ton, and this is the the Woomera One rocket is uh, designed to carry 1.5 tons. It has uh, a Delta V reserve built in. And it looks like we're just gonna 
use. We're gonna use it this time. Yep, okay, there's an orbit. So let's go ahead and stage that, get over to the spent stage. All right, and back to our commsat. Oh, that was all exciting. Uh, but this this little satellite is safe for the time being. What I want to do now that our uh, station module one is coming up in its maneuver node in, in two and a half hours is I want to just leave Mooncom 4 in a Kerbin equatorial orbit for now and we'll come back to it once once station module one is done with all its business. That certainly looks correct. That certainly looks correct. I am mystified. I have no idea what happened to that rocket, and that is kind of disturbing. 